Anybody who is truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God knows that the Lord knoweth best. We know that we in and of ourselves are incapable of proper judgment in and of ourselves. The only one who knows truly what is good and what is evil is our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. And he tells us what is good and what is evil through his word, the authorized version of the scriptures. And see, one of the lies that Satan gave unto Eve in the Garden of Eden is that, you know, if you disobey and do contrary to what God said, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And see, man in and of himself is incapable of doing so. We need the Lord for him to tell us what is good and what is evil. Okay? So, within the scriptures, the spirit of truth who leads us and guides us into all truth does exactly that, guides us into all truth. And it is in the scriptures we find out what is good and what is evil. Okay? Absolutely. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please follow me along word for word, verse by verse of the scriptures we will be looking at today. Follow me along. Check me out. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Sometimes I do that. Be a Berean. Follow me along in the scriptures we're going to be looking at today. Proverbs 3, verses 1 on verse 10. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Mm. You live your life the way the Lord would have you to live, according to the dispensation that we are in. Okay, Things will go better for you. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Our Lord knows what's best. You and I, in and of ourselves, we don't. Okay? Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Simple. Simple. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he'll direct you. We have a promise right there. The problem is that we are fallible man. That we can't do that 24 hours a day. Not even the mighty. Apostle Paul could do that. Not even he could. And I call him mighty because he was the greatest of us of the church of the living God. Yes, he was. He was the greatest of us of the church of the living God. One of the greatest. Yes, he was. But even he, for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, couldn't do it perfectly. Okay? Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Mm. Health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Now, right away, because this is written in the, uh, written for the dispensation of the law, but there is a lot of instruction and in righteousness with what we just looked at. Verse 9, you know, is talking about actually, uh, according to the law, you know, you bring in the, uh, the, newly uh, the first fruits of the harvest and stuff like that, okay? But for our instruction in righteousness, honor the Lord with thy substance, with yourself, okay? With yourself, things, uh, yourself personally, okay? And with the first fruits of, thine in, of all thine increase, okay? 
What do you do the first thing you do in the morning when you first wake up? What do you do? Hmm? What do you do? Light a cigarette? Go have a cup of coffee? Get on the health phone? Hmm? What do you do? It's the first thing you do in the morning. Hmm? See, in Romans chapter 12, follow me along. In Romans chapter 12, we read some very, very simple things here. Very simple. Very simple. Okay? Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And what is God's will for you as the church of the living God? Your sanctification. Okay? To abstain from all appearance of evil. Okay? And that also includes, that also includes what goes into your mouth. Okay? What goes into your mouth doesn't defile a man, but what cometh out of the mouth, that defileth the man. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Okay? We know that. This video, we're going to be talking a bit about fast and fasted. We're not going to be really addressing the word fasting. Because what is fasting? The actual of uh, doing of fasting, you know, of not, uh, you know, abstaining from like food and stuff like that, right? As we, as we automatically think and stuff like that. We're not going to be looking at that, okay? We are going to be looking at fast and fasted, okay? But before we do that, I want to, I want to talk to you a little bit about this because um, for health reasons, um, I want to share with you a little what I've been doing here uh, recently for a little over a week, okay? Um, in the description box, there will be a link for a doctor, what is his name? Eric Berg, I believe his name is. Dr. Berg, you know, many of us know him as. Um, spiritually, I wouldn't stand behind him at a checkout line. But when it comes to his stuff on YouTube... His approach, now what he's like in his actual physical practice as a doctor, I don't know. I don't know. He's kind of a, you know, he's kind of a celebrity doctor, so, you know, it'd probably be quite expensive to have him as an actual physical doctor that you can go to. But what he does here on YouTube is talks about health issues and stuff like that, but he goes about it addressing it in, okay, like, what's the problem? And he seems to be an advocate for better health rather than the Jesuit-trained doctors of today. And you got to remember, a majority of, if not all the doctors that are out there today do have some kind of Jesuit tie-in. I bet you even Dr. Eric Berg does. That somewhere in his training, there is Jesuitical training there. Because the Jesuits were on the medical establishments. A lot of you will be saying, well, wait a minute, Brad, the sons of Ishmael. You, that's what we primarily see in the medical establishments. And you are right. Yes. Yes, that is true. That, that's true. But the things that they are learning, that they are being trained, stem from the Jesuit order. Yes. Uh, you know, for example, here in America we, and elsewhere, they call them hospitals. The Knights Hospitalitors. Okay. All right. Yeah. And who would know better the body of man besides the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, than those of the Jesuit order who are the masters of torture and stuff like that? Okay, but anyway, most of the Jesuit doctors out there, their thing is what, especially here in America, 
You go to a doctor because you got some kind of a problem. What do they do? You got a problem? Here's a pill. Oh, I broke my arm. Here's a pill. <laughs> I got heart problems. Here's a pill, right? Dr. Berg, at least here on YouTube, like I said, what he does in his actual practice, don't know. But here on YouTube, his approach is different. Go about it. Okay, what are, what, what are you eating? Okay, let's take a natural approach. What vitamin deficiencies you have and so on and so forth, okay? All right? That's what Dr. Berg seems to do. And I do recommend Dr. Berg. Like I said, spiritually, I wouldn't stand behind him at a checkout line. But when it comes to certain aspects of health, Dr. Eric Berg seems to know what he's talking about. And I bring up Dr. Eric Berg because, uh, like I said, the link for his channel will be in the description box. Check out his playlists, okay? Dr. Berg is a proponent for what is known as intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting. And what that is, is basically a type of fasting where you have a regimented time of eating and you have a regimented time of allowing your body to heal, to get the nutrients of what you have eaten and so on and so forth. And it's just better for your body all along and all around, okay? Like I said, uh, check out some of the stuff Dan for his link for the channel. His channel will be in the description box. But um, what he recommends is exactly that, this intermittent fasting. And I personally, now this is not for everybody, okay? The, uh, the thumbnail that you see about rabbit, is also about because of has you know we're going to be looking up fast and fasted but we're going to be doing these little rabbit trails in this video so you know okay so you know but personally for over a week now i myself have been doing this intermittent fasting and there have been people along the line uh that have recommended to me doing intermittent fasting there's uh, some uh, trouble starter uh, Canadian fellow who once uh, recommended to me intermittent fasting. The guy's a troublemaker. Um, but anyway, um, he recommended it to me. And, you know, at the time, it's like, okay, whatever, whatever. But when you start having health problems yourself and um, things start happening, you start to do some of these things. You, I mean, you, you know, when going to a doctor, when getting on pharmaceutical drugs, pharmacaea, sorcery is not an option. What else is there for you? But you got to mind your P's and Q's and your diet. Okay? You really do. And what I have been doing personally, now like I said, this is not for everybody. Not everybody is having problems, but... See, in America specifically, with all the high fructose corn syrup poison and the uh, pedophagine things that have been put upon Americans through entertainment, through media, and through diet, okay? That has turned my American countrymen into slothful couch potatoes, being poisoned daily by fast food, by food that isn't even food to begin with. With all these horrific preservatives and these genetically modified poisons. Okay? Alright? So, intermittent fasting, which I have been doing now for over a week. It's, I started out doing, it's like, okay, there are 24 hours in a day. Alright? Prove that to you. Absolutely. Uh, first, go to John chapter 11. John chapter 11. There are 24 hours in a day. A lot of people like to argue this. It's like, well, there's actually only 22 hours in the day. John chapter 11, verse 9. Just, uh, just one verse. Jesus answered, uh, John chapter 11, verse 9. Are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. So our Lord right there says that there are 12 hours in the day. Some like to say, well, okay, then a day is only 24 hours. 
or it's only 12 hours, excuse me, because of that. They think they're being cute. They think they're being smart Alexes. And they say, see, well, our, your lawyer, Brad, just said that uh, there's only 12 hours in the day. Uh, Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Okay. Uh, verse 5. <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's uh, start at verse 1 on to verse 5 in Genesis chapter 1. Okay. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the capital S, Spirit of God, moved upon the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. There's the Godhead. There's the, uh, God, Father, the Spirit of God, verse 2, and God said, okay, what, when he said, he spake, okay, there's the Godhead, all right? And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And our Lord just said that there are 12 hours in the day. And then there is an evening and a morning. Okay? There's a morning and an evening. So 12 plus 12 is 24. Okay? So even in scripture, it tells you that there are 24 hour, that a day is a 24 hour period, okay? Intermittent fasting. There are many methods, and like I said, check out some of what Dr. Berg recommends. But I started, it's like, okay, 12 hours of no food, okay? And within that 12 hours, you give your body time to recover, and to rest, okay? So 12 hours without food, and then there's a window of 12 hours where you allow for food. That's how I started. But then again, you gotta think about something, okay? Theoretically, theoretically, man is supposed to get what? Eight hours of sleep, okay? I don't, I, it's rare that I myself get eight hours, but okay, let's go with me here. You get eight hours of sleep, right? So there's eight hours. And for another eight hours in the day, you're supposed to do something, right? Do something, right? So sleeping and occupying yourself with a task, with the study of God's word, or whatever it is, so you got 16 hours there, okay? Uh, theoretically, if you sleep for eight hours, right? So you got 16 right there. You have what? Hmm? You have what? Another what? 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. You have another eight hours. What gets done with those eight hours? Hmm? What gets done with those eight hours? In those eight hours, theoretically what? Eating, reading the scriptures, praying on to the Lord and that kind of stuff, right? Right? So, on the onset... This thing of intermittent fasting, okay? Managing the time that you have health-wise so that your body repairs itself and actually gets the nutrients of what you are eating and also minding what you eat, okay? Because like I said, here in America, a lot of the food that is being offered is poisonous. Absolutely. High fructose corn syrup, deadly poison over time. It won't kill you right away. But it's deadly poison. It really is. It really is. And I started this with the 12 hour and 12 hour thing. Okay? And when you're doing this intermittent fasting, that doesn't mean it's like, okay, within the 12 hours that you allot yourself to eat, you don't gorge yourself like a pig and do the eating of 10 days in just 12 hours. No, no. See, we're supposed to have what is called moderation. Okay, Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Moderation. Moderation. Okay, you don't just gorge yourself like, okay, uh, the way I'm at now, it's uh, anywhere between 16 and 20 hours of fasting with ever the four or six hours or whatever where a window of where I allot myself to eat some food. Okay, but 
Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Verses 4 on to verse 7. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 on to verse 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Moderation. Let your moderation be known unto all men. How do you do that? By living, by being a living example as an ambassador for Christ, okay? Remember, we're supposed to walk our talk as well, okay? Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Okay? So, moderation. Moderation, like, okay, you go to feast, or you go, let's say you're going out with your family or something. You don't, you know, you don't gorge yourself on, you don't gorge yourself on the food, and also you don't gorge yourself on things of the world. Okay? You have moderation, okay? And also, go to Proverbs chapter 25. Proverbs chapter 25, okay? We are supposed to have moderation, okay? A little self-control, a little uh, self-government, all right? Proverbs 25, verses 16 on to verse 17. Hast thou found honey... Eat so much is as sufficient for thee, lest thou be filled therewith and vomit it. Moderation and eating. Verse 17. Withdraw thy foot from thy neighbor's house, lest he be weary of thee and so hate thee. And also while we're here, look at verses 27 and 28. It is not good to eat much honey. So for men to search their own glory is not glory. Verse 28 about moderation again. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Hmm. And what happens when you overeat? Hmm? What happens? Your body gets put into overdrive because you've put so much into your stomach. You have bombarded your body with so much food. Your body's like, oh, man, now i got to work overtime to get, you know, to put this where it's got to go and to get, get this stuff going and stuff like that. Hence, moderation. Moderation. If you're doing intermittent fasting, okay, which I am recommending to you, you give yourself a time frame, a window to eat, and time where you refrain from eating, which is better for your body and healthier for you all the way around. Okay? All right? It's different than, like I said, this is not for everybody. Because you got these guys who want to make their muscles that big, taking steroids or whatever, and they're constantly eating, but yet they're working out to build up their muscles and that kind of stuff. Most of us, most normal people, meaning normal, you know, living normally, not trying to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger with the big muscles and stuff like that, okay? Most of us aren't going to do like that. Most of us are not, okay? But there again, like it says here in verse 16, Hast thou found honey? Eat so much as is sufficient for thee. You don't eat until you're bloated and can't move anymore. Eat as much as is sufficient for you. Okay? What's a warning? Lest thou be filled therewith and vomit it. You eat so much that you feel like you're going to be sick. Okay? And also go to Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verses 16 and 17. Woe to thee, O land, when thy king is a child, 
and thy princes eat in the morning. Blessed art thou, O land, when thy king is the son of nobles, <coughs> and thy princes eat in due season for strength, not for drunkenness. Now, this is not saying that you can't enjoy the food you are eating. Okay. For example, my wife tonight, she's going to make meatloaf. My wife makes a ooh, really good meatloaf. And I savor that meal because it tastes good, you know? It's not what that's talking about, okay? Eat as, you, as is needful. It's not saying that you can't enjoy it, but we are to eat for strength, not for drunkenness, okay? And break fast, breakfast. Okay? Yes, breakfast is a very important meal of the day. Yes, it is. But, I mean, like I said, what do you do? You wake up in the morning, you, I mean, you lop out of bed, and right away you go to the refrigerator? No. 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 Give your body at least a couple of hours to get going. I mean, you wake up hungry, that's good! That's good! Okay? Okay, we gotta, we gotta remember this. And also, too, we also have to remember what it says in 1 Corinthians. Okay? 1 Corinthians, chapter 3. 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, verses 16 on to verse 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the capitalist Spirit of God dwelleth in you, now, the only way the Spirit of God can dwell in you personally is, uh, is if you are actually saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. You've come unto him on his terms, not your own, and he saved you. Okay? That is the only way that you are the temple of God, that your body is the temple of the living God, that God dwells in you, the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. The only way that happens is, is if you're actually saved. Okay? Verse 17. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. That any man encompasses others, but you as well. Okay? Are you eating junk food? God lives within you? Okay? That's, that's something to consider. That is something to consider. And also... Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 on to verse 20. For those of us who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, okay? See, health nuts out there are trying to tell you about better health, and this is a good thing, but onto people too that are not saved. And hence, they are teaching people to worship the body, rather than God who dwells in the body, who is supposed to dwell in the body. Okay? All right? 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 on to verse 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. This only applies to someone who is genuinely saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Okay? And of course, just one verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, just one verse, verse 31. Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Hmm? What glory to God are you giving by not showing your moderation to all men? When you sit there and eat yourself to death. Hmm? Hmm? Now, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with someone who is a full figure or, you know, you got a little on you, okay? That's not what I'm talking about. But there comes a point when too much is too much and it starts to affect you negatively in your health. And I got to tell you, when I started this intermittent fasting, within two days of doing this, I felt immediate results. I did. Because I started out, like I was saying, with 12 hours and 12 hours, and then watched what I ate within those 12 hours. 
I mean, I didn't pack in the eating of a day within that 12 hours. Okay, I ate twice at, at first and then allowed the 12 hours for my body to catch up. The next day, okay, the next day I shortened that to eight hours, uh, a window of eight hours. And I still ate twice, but I shortened that period of eight hours with the remaining time to let my body catch up. And then it went to six hours, okay? And ultimately to a four hour period with the rest of that uh, time allotted to not eating and letting your body use what you have put in it and to repair itself and to heal and that kind of thing, okay? And that's what Dr. Eric Berg himself recommends in some of his videos, that ultimately you get to 20 hours of fasting with a window of four hours where you allow food into the body. And you don't put junk in it. You don't gorge yourself. Uh, we just looked at uh, verses of scripture talking against that. Okay, you don't pack it on in that four hours. You use moderation. Okay, moderation. All right, healthier things, abstaining from uh, uh, genetically modified things the best you can. Because he, see, you got to remember here for us in America, unlike other nations where genetically modified uh, foods are a little bit more restricted than they are here in America. Okay, completely getting away from any genetically modified stuff here in America, I think is next to impossible in one way or another, unless you know for certain that the seeds uh, that you are growing do not have any, uh, that do not come from a source of any genetic modified material or anything like that. Okay. How do you know the grass fed uh, beef that you're eating is actually eating legit God grown grass, not tempered with chemicals and stuff like that. You know, you know what I'm saying? But when I started this intermittent fasting, within two days of doing it, I started feeling immediate results. And I also got to be honest with you, my diet was terrible. And I've gotten out of my uh, diet thus far, the high fructose corn syrup. And allowing myself personally a window between six and four hours where I allot for food. And the other time, you know, drink a lot of water, drink tea and stuff like that. Uh, and, you know, uh, stuff like that. Allowing my body to process and heal and use it and to put it, uh, give the nutrients to where it has to go. I felt immediate results. And I have heart problems clogged arteries and stuff like that, okay? I felt immediate, within two days, immediate difference by doing this. And I was taking, for a while there, lots of supplements, like fish oils and stuff like that. And like uh, one individual mentioned to me, who I, who I uh, at first was kind of mean to, and I apologized to him and asked him for forgiveness, um, I've gotten away from taking supplements now. Okay? The goal of supplement is to what? Supplement what isn't there. And personally, I don't want to be on supplements my entire life. And I've gotten away from supplements due to the inter intermittent fasting and putting into the diet things that are needful for the body, a lot better health and that kind of stuff. Okay, now I'm not going to outline for anything for you to eat. But what I've been doing myself personally um, has been working for me. And brethren, okay, I personally, I've gotten a little fat in the Botox. I need to lose weight myself. But overall, the, uh, the I feel better doing this. Okay, I did it, like I said, within two days, brethren. Within two days of doing this intermittent fasting, I felt results like that. And the more that I personally am doing this, the better I am feeling. I've gotten away from the supplements, and I'm feeling better. Even brethren who talk with me, it's like, you, you sound better, Brad. Okay? 
It's amazing when you do things that our Lord says, it's amazing what happens. It's amazing what happens. But now when it comes to fasting, to fast, to fast, here's a little interesting fact for you. Now see, here we're switching. We're switching gears. Do you know that the word fast, it appears in scripture something like what? 74 or 75 times? Here's a little fun fact for you. Do you know not one time in scripture the word fast has nothing to do with speed? What are you talking about? Look it up. Get yourself a concordance. Or you, you go online to where, you, you know, the King James Bible online and you put the word fast in there. Look out, look them up. Not one time does the word fast have anything to do with speed. Isn't that something? But nowadays we use the word, well, you run fast. He's a fast runner. But according to, check me out. Don't check me out. Check the scriptures out. Not one time in scripture does the word fast imply anything to do with speed. Okay? Not one time. Not one time. What does fast mean? Fast in scripture has two meanings. Let's look at these. Turn to Genesis chapter 20. Okay? Genesis chapter 20. Genesis chapter 20. One verse, verse 18, first reference, okay? Genesis chapter 20, verse 18. Let's read verse 17 and 18, okay? So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maidservants, and they bare children. For the Lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Now, look at that verse. That's first appearance. Okay? Fast. Closed up. Had fast closed up. So, Rapido? Speedy, expeditious? No. Look at the verse. Look, look at the verse. For the Lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech. Okay? Fast closed up. Quickly? No. No. Go to Judges. Go to Judges. Go to Judges. Go to Judges, we want verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 21. Judges, chapter 4, verse 21. Then Jael, Eber's wife, took a nail of the tent, and took a hammer in her hand, and went softly, am I reading the right one? Yes, I am. And went softly unto him, and smote the nail into his temples, and fastened, we're not going to look at fastened, even though it's in the context here, fastened it to the ground, for he was fast asleep and weary. So he died. So she went softly and he didn't woke up, wake up. And uh, <laughs> she took a hammer and a nail and put it through his head. So fast asleep. Does that mean, rapido, you fell asleep? No. No. What does it mean? Assured. Absolutely. Assuredly asleep. Okay? Firmly asleep. Okay? And, and Judges 16? Judges chapter 16, one verse, verse 11. Okay? <clears throat> Samson. Uh, Mr. Dunderhead Samson. And he said unto her, If they bind me fast, assured, assured, absolutely, 
tie fast, you know, tie them fast, not like rapido quick, but assured that, you know, it's um, grounded, rooted, assured, um, solid, solidified, okay? And he said unto her, if they bind me fast, assured, with new ropes that never were occupied, then shall I be weak and be as another man, okay? Fast. Has nothing to do with speed. Okay. Now, also in the book of Ruth, you see. Okay. Let's let's look at this. I want us to look at this. Okay. I want us to look at this because the one who created all language, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, knows. You know how the Lord uses words is different than how man uses words. And this is a perfect example of it. Fast, according to scripture, has nothing to do with speed. And what do we do? We equate what? We equate fast with speed, right? And it has nothing to do with speed. Not, nothing at all. One, well, one second, brethren. Sorry about that. Ruth chapter 2. Ruth chapter 2. Again, Ruth chapter 2, verse 8. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not, my daughter? Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens, assured by sol solid, you know, Hold fast. Hold assuredly. Okay? All right? Also in Ruth chapter 2, verse 21. Verse 21. And Ruth the Moabitess said, He said unto me also, Thou shalt keep fast by my, by my young men until they have ended all my harvest. Okay? And also verse 23. So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz. So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean unto the end of barley harvest and of wheat harvest and dwelt with her mother-in-law. Okay? So fast um, has nothing to do with speed. But now, while in Judges, go back to Judges, go to Judges chapter 20. Now I want to show you something. Okay? The first appearance of fast as meaning to abstain from food doesn't appear until 2 Samuel. But you know what happens, okay? But you know what happens uh, otherwise? Fasted appears before fast, meaning abstaining from food. And that's something. Fasted. Uh, Judges 20. One verse, verse 26. Judges 20, verse 26. Here's the first appearance of fasted, which fasted means abstaining from food. Okay? But fast, singular, abstaining from food, doesn't appear until 2 Samuel. And we're going to look at that. But the other appearances of fast before 2 Samuel, meaning to be assured, to stand solidly in something, okay? Has nothing to do with speed, okay? Hold fast until I come, okay? Check this out. Judges 20, verse 26. Then all the children of Israel and all the people went up and came unto the house of God and wept and sat there before the Lord and fasted that day until even and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. Fasted that day until even. Okay? Abstain from food. Alright? So fasted appears before fast meaning to abstain from food. But the word fast as we already looked at, the first couple of appearances has nothing to do with speed. And the first couple of appearances of fast that we have seen is not about abstaining from until 
we get to 2 Samuel. But you know what? Now, fasted, uh, hold your place there because we're going to be going back to the Old Testament. Go to Acts chapter 13. Okay? Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. Verses 1 on to verse 3. Acts, thank you, Lord. Acts chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 3. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius and Cyrene and Menian which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. And, and no, there's no and there. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted. Okay? The Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. The Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit. Okay, God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Okay? So fasted, when you see the word fasted in Scripture, is always about what? Abstaining from. Okay? Abstaining from food. Okay? But now, back to the word fast, the very first time that fast me is implied as abstaining from food is 2 Samuel. Okay? And I want you to notice this. 2 Samuel chapter 12. Now this is after the Bathsheba debacle. Okay? When the Lord... Uh, took the child away, okay? The child that was born out of adultery, uh, a birth of a child which by law David should have been killed for doing, okay? But 2 Samuel chapter 12, we're going to read verses 15 on to verse 23, okay? Check this out. And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and it was very sick. David therefore besought God for the child. And David, look at that, and David fasted, verse 16, and went in and lay all night upon the earth. And right even in this context, fasted appears before the singular word fast, as meaning to abstain from food. Okay? All right? Let's keep reading this. And the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth, but he would not, neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died, and the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken on to our voice. How will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? But when David saw that his servants whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore David said unto his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. Then David arose from the earth, and washed and anointed himself, and changed his apparel, and came into the house of the Lord, and worshipped. Then he came to his own house, and when he required, they when they when he required, they set bread before him, and he did eat. Uh, verse twenty-one. Check this out. Here it is. Then said his servants unto him, "What thing is this that thou hast done?" They're like, "Dude, okay, wait a minute, dude, what's going on?" All right, thou didst fast and weep. You check it out. Here's the first time that fast is in reference unto abstaining from food. That's why we read the context. Okay? This is the first time that fast is um, equated onto abstaining from food. The singular. While fasted appears in Judges 20 verse 26 and even in this context before the singular. Okay? Thou didst fast and weep for the child while it was alive. But when the child was dead, thou didst rise and eat bread. They're like, what, what's going on? 
Check this out. And he said, while the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that the child may live? One of the reasons why God calls to fasting. One of them. Okay, one of the reasons. There are many reasons why a uh, man should fast. Okay, we're also going to address that and also give you a warning about these wicked charismatics. Okay, but more on that in a bit. Let's finish this in here, okay? And he said, while the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that the child may live? And now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. He shall not return to me. Okay? So, what we see here about the word fast, the singular, fast. First several appearances about what fast is, hold fast, assured, you know, like a, you know, like a nail. Like a nail. And we are told in 1 Corinthians chapter 16... 1 Corinthians chapter 16, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13, okay? Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, okay? Is that talking about speed? No. Assured, on solid ground, stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men, be strong. Okay, and also Galatians chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5, just one verse, Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Stand fast, assured, on the capital R rock, okay, on solid ground. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Okay? All right, you see that? Please, search the scriptures. Fast has nothing to do with speed. Nothing. According to scripture. According to scripture. I understand why those of other nations, especially our English brethren, kind of have a distaste for American English. Okay? I understand it. I understand it. Just like us Americans, you know. We take everything, make it our, our own, and mess it up. Okay? But fast, again, people, according to Scripture, and this is our standard, fast has nothing to do with, uh, with food. Okay? Uh, our fast has nothing to do with, excuse me, Excuse me. It has nothing to do with speed. Words are important. Words have meaning. Okay? And, uh, and another one here. Go to 1 Kings. Go to 1 Kings chapter 21. 1 Kings chapter 21. Please, on your own time, it will benefit you. He's like, Brad, I don't believe you. That in Scripture, fast has nothing to do with speed. Check it out. Do it. Do it yourself. Not one time. Not one time. Okay? He's a fast runner. We're using it wrong. We're using the word wrong. Okay? Uh, 1 Kings 21, verses 9 on to verse 12. This is the wickedness of Jezebel. Getting uh, Naboth killed. Okay? And she wrote in the letters saying, Proclaim a fast. There it is. About abstaining from food. And set Naboth on high among the people. And set two men, sons of Belial, before him. To bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king. And then carry him out and stone him that he may die. And the men of his city, even the elders and the nobles who were the inhabitants of his city, did as 
Jezebel, a type of the Roman Catholic Church, had sent unto them, and as it was written in the letters which she had sent unto them, they proclaimed a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. Fast, again, abstaining from food. Okay? So it's interesting when we look at it like this, that how we have perverted the words of God. Like the word quick, okay? Quickly, behold, I come quickly. Okay, behold, I come quickly. Yes, that means to hasten, yes. But the word quick, uh, to judge the quick and the dead, the alive and the dead, they go down quick into hell. Rapido? No. Alive into hell. Okay? I myself got confused on that. And a brother from Croatia, it's like, uh, hey, Brad, check the context. It's like, you're right. See, man has messed up language. Really has. At the behest of who? Hmm? Who's the one who's really messed up the language? Okay, yes! You of other nations, I understand. And my American countrymen, look at how the Jesuits run our nation. You don't hold it against other nations when you come across people who hate us. America is run by the Jesuits. America has been used as a weapon of the Vatican. Okay, look at what America has done socially, culturally, onto many other nations, okay? I understand why other nations hate us. I don't blame them. And when I'm I myself, you know, through emails and correspondence and as accosted for, you know, you're, you, you know, you Americans are so stupid. You know, why are you Americans so evil? It's like, <laughs> because of, my country is owned by the Jesuits. That takes people, you know, when it's like, yeah, I understand. But who is the one, who was the one who attacked what God said? Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. I already made a reference to it. Verses 1 on the verse 5. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 on the verse 5. Now the serpent, this is the devil, Satan, Lucifer. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. The very first recorded uh, chronological thing that we are given in Scripture of what Satan does is what? Question what God has said. Did he really mean that? And you look at the euphemistic um, society that America and the world is in. A euphemistic language, which is promoted by Jesuitism. Okay? I'll give you an example. People don't have the flu today. Corona gonna get you. All right? Again, like what George Carlin talked about. Shell shock. The uh, battle condition of shell shock, which is now what? Post-traumatic stress disorder, where it was once called shell shock, okay? That is euphemistic language. That is the Jesuits trying to change their fooling people that if you change the name of the condition, you change the condition. Another good example. Look at the stupidity that is happening with the gender thing. Okay? It's ridiculous. It's stupid. Okay? Yea, hath God said. Okay? Yea, hath God said. Ye shall not eat of the tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Yes? But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, 
ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. You look across the page and look at verse 17 in Genesis chapter 2. Our Lord doesn't say you can't touch it. Don't eat it. Okay? And look what Satan does. And the serpent said unto the woman, he shall not show. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You can judge for yourself what is good and what is evil. Okay? <laughs> you can judge. It's relative. It's relative to you. It's relative. Okay? That, that word might mean something to you, but to me, it's all relative. Why? Because you did, okay? You do contrary to what God said, then you'll be able to judge what is good and what is evil, as if you can do it right. And you can't. Man in and of themselves, mankind in and of themselves, are incapable of judging rightly. Okay? Only God can do that rightly. Only he knows what is truly good and what is truly evil. And look, look at the news, look at the media, look at everything that's being promoted today. What is going on? Good is evil and evil is good. Okay? Doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this stuff out, dear friend. Does it? Does it? Okay? Does it? You know, and you know, you go to Psalm 20. So, uh, not Psalm 20, excuse me. Psalm 12, okay? Psalm 12. Just two, uh, two verses in Psalm 12. All right? <laughs> Verses 6 and 7. The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them. What? The words. O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Where does God preserve his words? In the authorized version of the scriptures. The Bibles contradict each other. The Bible, even the Bibles don't say the same thing. Okay? The Bibles are, yea, hath God said. This is what God has said, the authorized version. And according to what God has said, Fast has nothing to do with speed. Think about this, brethren. Think about how, yea, hath God said, has permeated a lot of the things that our speech is involved with. And remember, words are important. Words have meaning. Another good example is the stupid word rapture. Okay? Rapture does not appear in Scripture. But people don't know what you're talking about, so I'm going to still use a word that doesn't appear in Scripture. Why are you stupid? What's wrong with you? Why don't people know what actually... Uh, rapture doesn't appear in Scripture. The redemption of the purchased possession does. The catching away does. Well, people don't understand that. Whose fault is that? Okay? You are of the church of the living God. Okay? Okay? Make a stand for these things. Use the correct term. Words are important. Words have meaning. Okay? All right? Proverbs 30. Proverbs 30. Okay, just one verse. Verse 6. All right? Proverbs 30, verse 6. Uh, verse 5 and 6. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Kind of like what happened with Eve. She added unto his words. He never said, don't touch it. He said, don't eat it. He didn't say you couldn't touch it. Just don't eat it. Okay? All right? Now, fasting, to fast. Like I said, we're not going to concentrate on fasting because that's the actual doing of fasting, of, of, of abstaining and stuff like that. Okay? You're not holding, you're not hold fasting to the word of God. Hold fast 
the word of God. Okay? All right? Proclaim a fast. All right? I fasted. Intermittent fasting. Okay? You see how that works? All right? But when it comes to fast, to actual fast, there are many reasons why we do. There are many reasons why that we do fast, okay? And why we should, okay? Like I said, intermittent fasting, okay? Health benefits. I have heart problems. My diet was horrible. Within two days of doing inter intermittent fasting, I felt immediate results. And I'm getting better. Okay, I'm getting better. And I encourage you, you've got health problems? Excuse me, intermittent fasting, try it. Okay, it's hard at first, but it gets easier. And like I said, I'm off these supplements. I've been now for a couple days, okay? And that's good. I don't, like the one brother, uh, one, one uh, mentioned who I was mean to, unfortunately, okay? Um, it's like, you don't want to be on supplements your entire life. And he's right. You eat right. The best you can. Okay? You abstain from things that are poisonous. The best you can. Especially if you're in America. You eat moderately. In moderation. You don't gorge yourself like a stuffed pig. Eh? You don't do that. You give your body time to... Do what, what God created it to do with what you have, what what you have been, you know, what you put in there. Okay, I'm telling you, brethren, people, you got health problems. Try intermittent fasting. Okay, like I said, I have heart problems, I have clogged arteries and all that nonsense. Okay, I've been doing intermittent intermittent fasting now for over a week. I'm feeling better. I'm off the supplements. Okay, feeling better. Okay? But there are reasons why we fast. Okay? Let's look at a couple of these. Let's look at the, the very first one. For guidance. Okay? For guidance. All right? Ezra. Ezra. Chapter 8. Just a few verses. We're not going to look at all these examples. Just giving you some examples. Okay? Ezra 8. 21 on to verse 23. And as we already saw, David, he fasted for the child. We already saw that. We don't have to go over that. Okay. David fasted. Why? That hopefully the Lord would have mercy and let the, the child live. Okay. All right. But Ezra 8, verses 21 on to verse 23. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava that we might afflict ourselves before our God. Why? To seek of him a right way for us, and for our little ones, and for all our substance. For I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way, because we had spoken unto the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all them for good that seek him. But his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. So we fasted and besought our God for this, and he was entreated of us. For guidance. Okay? You don't know what to do. Okay? Keep your mind focused on the Lord. Keep your mind focused on the Lord. And in keeping your mind focused on the Lord for seeking and guidance, the idea is that you will be so occupied with what the Lord wants to what he will show you that you will be what? To occupied or to busy. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. These are not all the reasons. Okay? We're just looking at some of them. I am doing fasting, intermittent fasting, for health reasons. I need to lose weight. But I'm also feeling better, okay? But other reasons why you fast, okay? For guidance in Ezra. And another reason why will come about Matthew 16, verses 5 on to verse 12. 
Matthew chapter 16, verses 5 on to verse 12. Okay? And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Now check this out. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Now pay attention to this. Okay? Now right there they're thinking of physical bread. Okay? And they didn't have any bread. So, okay. All right? So what did they have to eat? Check out what our Lord says. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves because ye have brought no bread? Now you got to remember, this right here, what we're looking at is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? The king was on the earth. The king was on the earth working miracles, miraculous signs. Okay? Got to remember that. Got to rightly divide the word of truth. But, let's continue. Do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets he took up? Neither the seven loaves or the four thousand, and how many baskets he took up? Hmm. Interesting, huh? How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Then they understood that then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Okay? But the thing about what he said about the bread there, okay? Number one, rightly dividing the word of truth, the king was on the earth. He miraculously provided for his people, okay, as king, okay? That's the meaning of the loaves, okay? He, they were miraculously, the, the fishies and the bread were appearing miraculously from their hands. They're like, well, can you imagine how, what that must have been like, felt like? If you were there, you're like, whoa, <laughs> this is, wow. How is this one piece of bread feeding so many? Wow, Lord, okay? Point is, Jesus as king would provide for them, okay? That's the point. Today, okay, the Lord will provide for you, okay? The Lord will provide for you. Not in the same way as he would as king on earth. No, no. But the Lord will provide for you. Okay, this is very good instruction in righteousness. Okay, I myself have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Okay, the Lord will provide for you. Okay, all right. But see, they were too busy doing what? Mark 6. Mark chapter 6, verses 30 and 32. See, Mark 6, 30 on to verse 32. And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all th things, both what they had done and what they had taught. See, they were busy doing the works of the Lord. And because the, they were busy doing the works of the Lord, there's like, oh, I, I haven't eaten anything. Or too busy. It's like, come on, we got to go. Oh, shoot, we, we brought no bread. And the Lord's like, guys, what, you think I can't provide for you? You forgot to break, bring bread? Uh, 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 hello, McFly. Do you remember the loaves? Okay. You also got to be dispensational. You got to rightly divide the word of truth. He as king could, he did it, miraculously provide. But for us today, even thus, okay, he will provide for you. He will provide for you, okay? Not in the same manner as he did of miraculously loaves appearing, but he will provide for you, okay? He will provide for you. But see, another way, another reason why some will fast. For example, you get into the scriptures, spend four or five to six hours and searching the things of the Lord, you know, and much study is a weariness of the flesh, 
It's like you get preoccupied in doing the work of the Lord, and because you are preoccupied in doing the work of the Lord, the Lord sustains you in that work. And then you're like, oh, oh yeah, I, I, I haven't eaten because I was so, um, praise the Lord, doing what the Lord had called me to do. Okay? Verse 31. And he said unto them, Come ye, ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. Why? Because they were busy doing the things of the Lord. Okay? Okay? We already looked at why David fasted. Okay? And we looked at Ezra. Okay? For guidance. And also here for the apostles. And also for us today, the Church of the Living God. Okay? All right? We can get preoccupied. Praise the Lord of doing the work of the Lord. And when the Lord is the one who is guiding us, we can sometimes be like, oh, yeah, I, I you know, need to eat. Okay? <laughs> or, 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 yeah, I've been, you know, you know, we've been out busy witnessing, and by the time we get home and, and tracting, you know, <laughs> my wife's like, you know, we were, and we've had this happen. You know, my wife's like, you know, well, we, we didn't have anything to eat while we were, were out, Brad. It's like, I know. Why? You know, because we were doing the things of the Lord. And verse 32 here, And they departed into a desert place by ship privately. Again, the Lord sustained. It's like, hey, you've been, you've been doing a lot of stuff for me. Take a moment. Sit down, have something to eat, that kind of thing. Okay? All right? But there's also another type of fasting. And the charismatics are very wicked in this because the charismatics will fast in order and teach people to fast as a means to manipulate God to get things to gratify their flesh. Like you want to fast so that the Lord will give you a million dollars. Okay? Fasting for the wrong reasons. Okay? Isaiah 58 and you got to watch out. I mean, you can go on the, these so-called Christian book things. And there, there's a lot of stuff out there on fasting. Okay? And yes, for health reasons, yes. I personally, I'm recommending to you intermittent fasting. Yes. Okay? Fast because um, without even thinking because you're busy doing things for the Lord. It's like, Lord, like when uh, when we lost the house, and where, Lord, where 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 do you want us to go? You know, I fasted then. It's like, okay, Lord, I need you to guide me as the head of this house. Where are we gonna go? I have no idea. We end up here, okay? Stuff like that. All right, okay. Like David, mourning, fasting and mourning. Okay, yes. But see, you got to watch out. Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58, verses 1 on to verse 7. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness, and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching the God. But for what reasons? Okay? For show. Like it talks about in Matthew chapter 23. All their works they do to be seen of men. Remember our Lord warns, okay, and I believe we're going to look at it, about, you know, when ye fast, don't, you know, disfigure yourself so you have look on the people that you're fasting. Then you have your reward. Okay? That's why I can talk to you about intermittent fasting. Okay? I'm not doing it for spiritual things. For health reasons. Okay? But if I were seeking the Lord, if I were mourning to the Lord, okay? Or if we, like we have been before, busy doing the work of the Lord... I'm not, well, yeah, I'm fasting because I want the Lord, you know, to guide me. No, you, you've lost it, 
Okay, you, you see what I mean? But see, these wicked charismatics will talk to you all about fasting, but they do it in a way to number one, so that they appear unto other people that they are fasting, and number two, as if a means to manipulate God, as if he's a puppet, and that they can control God by something they do. You gotta watch out for that, okay? That Jonathan Kahn and all these wicked charismatics, you know, talking about fasting for this and fasting for that, trying to manipulate God. That's not, you know, no. But, okay, verse 2, these people were seeking the Lord daily. But why were they fasting? Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife, and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. How many of these charismatics are fasting so that they'll get their financial breakthrough? Fasting for the sake of covetousness, that God will come through and give them their financial breakthrough so they can go get their Rolls Royce. Behold, he fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul. Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen to abstain from all appearance of evil? We're going to look at that later. To lose, to loose, excuse me, to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? And that thou bring the poor that are out, that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him? And that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh? Charity, self-sacrifice? When before here earlier, the fasting that they were doing was for self-gratification self-gratification you see also oh, it's uh, uh, Matthew chapter 11 is similar uh, about this Matthew chapter 11 verses 16 and 19 Matthew chapter 11 Matthew chapter 11 verses 16 uh, uh, on the verse 19 our Lord likens the generation that he was witnessing on to okay but where unto shall I liken this generation it is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and ye have not lamented. <laughs> For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he hath a devil. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man gluttonous and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children. Okay, now go to Matthew chapter 6 while we're in Matthew. Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 on to verse 18. Okay. Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 on to verse 18. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. How many of these wicked charismatics 
do the opposite to that. And note where this is written. This is written for what? The time of the kingdom of heaven, where it's all works. No faith is needed in the time of kin, uh, in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, in that time period, the thousand years of the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because you're going to be able to see Jesus Christ on the throne. Okay, you don't need faith when you can see the guy. Okay, everything is works during the kingdom of heaven. Fasting is work. Okay, it is. It is. Okay, it is. It is. All right. All right. Fasting, yes, can have spiritual connotations to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. But see, when we fast today for guidance, the app, the apps, you know, for like when, you know, it's because you are so preoccupied, focused on the Lord himself, that it's like nothing else matters. Lord, <laughs> I got to give you all my attention so that you can lead me and guide me in what you would have me to do, okay? Everything else gets put on the burner except for the Lord. That's how we ought to be all the time. But see, because of the flesh, because our spirit and soul dwell in the skin suit, we can't do that 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Not even Paul could do it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You know, that's Romans chapter 7. Okay, but see, we we strip away all things, all distractions, and have our eye focused on the Lord. Okay, all right. People, some people will take the for an example. People want to try to make the redemption of the purchased possession separate from the Lord when the Lord is. The redemption of the purchased possession. Well, they will uh, place way too much um, attention on the actual event rather than who is the event, the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay? People will pay more attention on the actual abstaining of rather than the Lord. Okay? You see? You see what I'm saying? Okay? So there are those out there who will fast with the right intention, but they will get preoccupied in the actual fast the fact that they are fasting when while they are fasting, all their attention is supposed to be on the Lord. Does that make sense? Okay? And the charismatics come around and say, hey, fast for this reason, so that Lord, the Lord will open to you a financial breakthrough. Okay, it's disgusting how Satan has twisted something that is there for us to utilize so that all our attention will be on the Lord and what he will do, see? And in that, the Lord sustains you, okay? All right? But see, there comes up this thing about in Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, okay? Okay? Mark chapter 2, verses 15 on to verse 20. Now, there are some out there who will call what we're about to look at its own dispensation. <laughs> Absolute nonsense. But Mark chapter 2, verses 15 on to verse 20. And it came to pass that Jesus sat at meat in his house. Many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples. For there were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they, say, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance." And the disciples of John and of the Pharisees used to fast. And they come and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and the Pharisees and of the Pharisees fast? But thy disciples fast not. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast 
while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them. Then shall they fast in those days. Now, what does this mean? Well, look at verses 4 on to verse 12 in Mark. Okay? Now, remember the loaves. Remember what we've already looked at and what we've already discussed. Jesus as king. Okay? Now, some will want to say this is one of the dispensations of the seven. Nonsense. Why is that nonsense, Brad? Because the law was still binding. The perfect sacrifice for sins had yet to be made. Okay? The law was still there. The law was yet to be fulfilled. Okay? So, I do not believe at all that the three-year ministry of the Lord was its own dispensation. I don't buy that for one second, okay? Because of other places in Scripture, he was uh, made of wo a made of woman made under the law, okay? The law was still binding, all right? But Mark chapter 2 now, verses 4 and verse 12. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Okay. God as king. He was on the earth then. Okay. All right. Why would they fast when he was right there? Okay. Why would they fast as in Ezra? Okay. As David, when he was right there and could forgive sins right there presently. Okay. All right, let's continue. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee? Or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thy own house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, and so much that they were all that in so much that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. The king was on the earth. The king who could miraculously provide for those who followed him. Okay? Okay? And he could forgive sins. And during the kingdom of heaven, okay, same thing. He can miraculously provide for his own, and he will be forgiving sins. Okay? See how that works? Okay. See how that works? All right? Because people will be like, well, they didn't fast when Jesus was on the earth. But you just saw about the disciples of John and the Pharisees, they did fast. But they didn't, uh, well, Christ, those following Christ didn't. Why? Because he could forgive their sins. They didn't need to fast as David did with God the Father right there. You see how that works? And as king, and as king during the kingdom of heaven. You see? See how that works? Okay? See how that works? Now go to Zechariah. More on this uh, type of fastings. Zechariah chapter 7. Zechariah chapter 7. Verses 1 on to verse 7. Zechariah chapter 7, verses 1 on to verse 7. And it came to pass, excuse me, and it came to pass in the fourth year of King Darius that the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah in the fourth day of the ninth month, even in Kislev, 
when they had sent unto the house of God Sherezir and Regem Melech and their men to pray before the Lord, and to speak unto the priests which were in the house of the Lord of hosts, and to the prophets, saying, Should I, where, uh, should I weep in the fifth month, separating myself as I have done these so many years? Then came the word of the Lord of hosts unto me, saying, Speak unto all the people of the land, and to the priests, saying, When ye fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, even those seventy years, did ye at all fast unto me, even to me? Again, why were they fasting? Hmm? Because they wanted to put all their attention on the Lord? Or they just wanted to get something from the Lord? As if he was there, you know, as if they could manipulate him. Kind of like a lot of the charismatics do. And when ye did eat, and when ye did drink, did ye not eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves? Should ye not hear the words which the Lord hath cried by the former prophets when Jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity and the cities thereof round about her, when men inhabited the south and the plain? And also now, go to Joel. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. See, a lot of the fasting that is being promoted nowadays, okay, if fasting is being promoted at all, is for as being promoted as a means to manipulate God for your own benefit. Okay? All right? No. No. As we already saw in Acts chapter 13, okay, they fasted and prayed. And the, the Lord... Uh, you know, send them off onto the work whereunto I called them. They were seeking the Lord for him, who he is, who he was, and will always be. Okay? Yes. They were seeking the Lord himself, for he himself. Okay? For his desire. Not their own. Joel chapter 2. Verse 12 on verse 14. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart, and not your garments. Actually, pay attention to the Lord. Just don't do a shoe to make it look like you're, you know, you're of us. You know, a shoe of religiosity. Okay? And rend your heart, and, and not your garments. And turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent, and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord, our, unto the Lord your God? Okay? He says right there, fasting. But... The, uh, why? Pay all the attention unto the Lord. Not just so, not you don't fast just so that you will look good. So that you can hopefully gain something to glorify yourself. But that you pay all your attention unto him that he may be glorified through what he has called you to do. And see, charismatics, in a very subtle way, have made it about them. They fast for strife and debate. Okay? And also, Isaiah chapter 22. Isaiah chapter 22. Isaiah chapter 22. Okay? Isaiah chapter 22, verses 12, on to verse 14, also. And in that day, did the Lord call God of hosts called to weeping, and to mourning, and to baldness, and to girding with sackcloth. And behold, joy and gladness, slaying oxen, and killing sheep, eating flesh, and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. And it was revealed in mine ears by the Lord of hosts, 
Surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till you die, said the Lord God of hosts. The Lord calls you to be separate from that. And there are certain things that some of us do, unfortunately, that may not be purged from us till we die. There are some of you who have horrendous habits that are killing you. But yet, because of stubbornness, you're not giving it up. And it's quite possible that, that what? And it was revealed in mine ears by the Lord of hosts, surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die, saith the Lord God of hosts. Roll that around in your head. When the Lord calls to what? Mourning, to weeping mourning, and to baldness and girding with sackcloth. Pay all your attention to the Lord. Give unto him what is rightly due unto him as your father, church of the living God. Okay? Not for what will benefit you, but that he may glor be glorified. Okay? Now, like I said at the outset of the beginning of this video, talking about intermittent fasting. Yes, I can talk to you about that because it's for health reasons. But see, there are other types of fasting that are scriptural. And we're looking at some of these reasons why and why should, you should not. Okay? Like we already looked at in Isaiah 58, when people fast for strife and debate, which is a it's problematic within the charismatics. Okay? All right. Now, let's go to Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23. And here is the, the carrot that they dangle, that Satan dangles before you. Proverbs 23. Verses 1 on to verse 8. You got to be careful about who is offering you what. Who's answering the prayers. Okay? When thou sittest to eat with the ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. What is being put before thee? Things to gratify your flesh, to make you look good, or things that will bring glory unto the Lord? And put a knife to thy throat, thou be a man given to appetite. Whether that's much food or appetite for entertainment, for escapism. Hmm? And we are called as the church of the living God to have moderation. What's your appetite for? Is it for the Lord or merely the things? Is it the blessor or the blessing? See, and uh, the devil, sure, fast. Fast for the blessing rather than the blessor. Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Call fast. Fast unto the Lord that he give you your financial breakthrough, right? You're focusing on things that are that like right there. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Okay. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire his dainty meats. Think about the dainty meats that Satan offers you. Hmm? which goes a little bit beyond just food. 
But let's let's encompass the food aspect. Okay? Let's encompass that. You're on the move, right? You gotta make that money. You gotta be a slave to your job, right? Gotta move, gotta move. So I'm gonna have a little fast food, right? I'm gonna have a little fast food. Okay? Or what other dainties? Hmm? What other dainties is the devil offering you in the guise of religiosity? Hmm? What other modes of escape is the devil offering you? Hmm? For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Hmm. And how does he think in his heart? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. I will be like the Most High. Hmm? Hmm? For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart isn't with thee. The morsel which thou Hast eaten, shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. Mm. Mm. And look at verses 19 on to verse 21. Hear thou, my son, and be wise, and guide thine heart in the way. Be not among wine bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty. And drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Like we already talked about. You overeat, you get drowsy. Okay? But drowsiness will clothe a man with rags. What happens when you are made drunk with the things that Satan offers you in a moment of time? Like through the media, that pedophagine thing that he um, makes you drunk with sight of your eyes the aspect of religiosity so that you will be made to look good huh think about that think about that hmm? think about that people go to John chapter 4 John chapter 4 John chapter 4 a little bit more of what I'm talking about here John chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. Go ahead and read the context on your own time on this, on John chapter 4, about the woman of the well. Okay? John chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The Lord will satisfy you. And see, what Satan offers you in the guise of religiosity doesn't satisfy you, does it? Doesn't satisfy you, does it? No. No, it doesn't. Does it? Does it? Hmm? Why do you think, personally, I tell you, don't go to a church building? Because that's Satan's playground, okay? The water that Satan has muddled with his feet that he's giving you, giving to you, makes you die of thirst because there's no life in it. The water that comes from Scripture, from our Lord Jesus Christ, that gives you life. What water is being offered to you? Okay? All right? Now, go to Philippians chapter 3. We're almost done, actually. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, verses 17 on to verse 19. 
Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. For many, for many of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is their destruction, whose end is destruction, whose capital G, God, is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. And that's what Satan off offers so many through Christianity, earthly things. Fast for earthly things. For, so, but if you are to fast for the Lord, okay, yes, earthly things may come. Yes, indeed. But see, the whole reason to fast scripturally is so that you pay everything that you have, all your attention, everything, everything is put aside. And it's only on the Lord. He is your entire focus. But see what Satan does through these other men, like with, the, again, the charismatics, okay? Gets you focused on the blessings rather than the blessor. So you are, to, so through the charismatics primarily, fast for the blessings rather than closer relation with the blessor. You see? You see? And you know what? To fast in mourning, to fast for guidance as I have done. But see, in fasting and guidance, everything is like unto the Lord, you know, out doing the works of the Lord, you know, like, I, like I've already told you. It's like, babe, we, we didn't eat. It's like, yeah, I know. I know. Because we were preoccupied with who? The Lord himself. See, way too often, people will get concentrated on what they are actually doing rather than he to whom we have to do, okay? And fasting scripturally puts your focus on him on whom we have to do, okay? And that is why, always why, you should fast if the Lord calls you to that. But see, Satan, with his yea hath God said, comes around and makes it to fast for the blessing rather than the blessor. And when you are fasting for just the blessings, you're not fasting for the blessor, you see? And therein, Satan can come along and say, hey, all this I will give you. If you bow down and worship me, I will be thine. What does that mean? Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Just like Esau. Just like Esau, who sold away his birthright for a bowl of soup. Brilliant, huh? Now, we are to desire what? 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. Okay? 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 and 3. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 and 3. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all speaking evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow by thereby. If so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Have you tasted that the Lord is gracious? Are you seeking the Lord for who he is or merely for what he gives you? Because I'm going to tell you, if you're seeking for merely the blessings, you're coming short of seeking the blessor. Okay? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 
verses 5 on to verse 8. Brethren, Church of the Living God, ye are all children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that are drunken, are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Okay? And let's finish this up with verses 16 on to the close of the chapter. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast. Hold fast that which is good. And there is none good but who? God. And look what that's followed up with. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray your whole spirit, soul, and body, a person, your whole person, that's what a spirit, soul, and body is, that's a person, be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with an holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. It's when you really get into the scriptures and you look at the words that our Lord has chosen for the scriptures. And you look at how Satan through the Bibles have perverted what God has said. For example, now, now I know about fast. That fast has nothing to do with speed, according to Scripture. And people, well, Brad, you're making it uh, an issue. Well, this is my standard. Okay? This is my standard. And words are important. Words have meaning. Okay? And if our Lord uses the word and we are using it in a way contrary to the way our Lord uses it, Do we change the word of God? Or does the word of God change us? I don't know how you're going to take this video. Um, I don't. I wanted to share with you about the intermittent fasting. Of how it's helped me greatly. Okay? Physically, feeling better because of my heart problems, okay? But also, I wanted to talk to you about scriptural fasting, to fast, and fast it, and stuff like that. And how interesting that a word that we think has one meaning, scripturally, scripturally doesn't mean it at all. And that um, to beware of why people call you to fast, especially within the Charismatics. Fasting for the blessings or the blessor. Got quite a few videos to be done. 
quite a few. Um, got some things that uh, got to talk about that the horror of Babylon is doing Roman Catholicism, which a brother of ours has probably already touched on, but, you know, as the Lord leads and guides. Also, there's this really wicked feminist out there who needs to be scripturally, you know, stuff like that. So, there's, Lord willing, going to be quite a few videos coming. Thank you to all of you who pray for us and um, who help us. Pray for one another as we pray for you. Thank you. Hopefully this this video will help you if you know any questions about you know this intermittent fasting like I said Dr. Berg's uh, link for his channel will be there check him out um, I highly recommend it it's something I'm doing um, and like I said I'm off the supplements now not having that fist around my heart you know congestion or whatever anymore you know because showing moderation Eating for strength and not for drunkenness. Abstaining from the poison that Satan offers. Best I can because I am in America. So it's gonna be it for this video. I'm gonna get this uploaded. Thank you for so much for watching this. If you do, we love you. See you in the next video.